Hi. I want you to imagine, okay? Just, just for a moment. I want you to imagine everything that you want your life to be. Everything. All beautifully worked out. Career, love, money, health, wealth, friendships, the way you feel when you wake up in the morning, the way you feel when you go through your days, the way when you feel like you go to bed at night, all those moments in between the moments. I want you to imagine that everything is already beautifully just the way that you want it to be. Okay? The way that you get that is through inner child healing. Now, when we speak about inner child healing, it is those patterns that are not serving us in the best possible way. Those patterns, um, those beliefs about life, those beliefs about ourselves. Okay, And most of those beliefs are not our fault because up until about the age of seven years old, children are like sponges. We just take in information. So whatever we present it with, we take on as truth and identity for ourselves. And these can be healthy patterns or it can be patterns that are not healthy. All right. And so with inner child healing, we are going back and we're seeing what are those patterns that are not serving us in the most positive way. In one of my other videos, I'm going to put two links in the description below that I also have about hypnosis. But in one of my other videos, I spoke about how... Um, a young lady came to see me and she had some trouble with her parents and she couldn't understand why because the relationship that they had was really meant to be good. You know, everybody did their best and everybody, there was money and there was, you know, time and all those type of things, you know, education, whatever. But what happened is that when, you know, when this child was conceived in the womb, the parents didn't really want to have the child. And even when they saw the child and, you know, um, they they decided to, they're going to be the best parents they can be, and they were, you know, happy and committed, that pattern has already been set in into the mindset of the child of, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve, I am not wanted by my parents, okay? And that for me personally was a, was a powerful, powerful, powerful moment um, that not only realized how I am able to help in my capacity of what I do and what other, you know, um, spiritual regression, hypnosis practitioners also do, um, it, it, it made me realize the, um, the magnitude of a moment, how one moment can change our lives, but in so saying, how one moment when you decide to to change your association with a pattern or your belief around the incident, how that can also change your life in a powerful, powerful way going forward. All right. So I believe that in all of us, there is um, like a little child that is looking for love and that is looking for acceptance. And it's looking to build a relationship with us. Now, we can call this our emotions, our emotional body. We can call it our heart. Um, you know, you can call it the pool of our, I don't know, soul. People call it very beautiful names. But um, it's about making that connection with yourself. It's about establishing what are those patterns, what are those beliefs um, about life and about yourself that are that are really sort of preventing you from living your best possible life. That is what holding you from having the courage and the confidence and the bravery, you know, to to experience the life that we want. Because a lot of times you say that you want to be happy. You say that you want to have the beautiful house. You say that you want to have a car and the partner and the job and, and the traveling and whatever it may be. But... There is a part inside our mind that often says, and this is usually a voice somewhere from childhood that says to us, it's not safe to have those things. You don't deserve those things. Um, your your value doesn't add up to those things. Okay, And of course, it's not exactly like your mind goes and says it to you, but sometimes we have this sort of belief about ourselves or this lingo going on in our mind about ourselves, you know. And we say many things like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm so silly. You know, I, I always make these mistakes. Um, you know, I'm so clumsy. Um, I'd never be able to do that, you know. I, I'm just not that good. And um, sometimes we just don't give ourselves a chance. We really don't. 
okay? And um, a lot of times the reason why we don't give ourselves a chance is because we feel that it might not work out, even when we are pathologically shy. Uh, now, you do get that people can be a little bit shy sometimes. I'm actually a little bit shy, believe it or not. <laughs> it took a lot of confidence for me to be able to come on YouTube and Facebook Live and things like that, you know, and stand in front of people. Um, but when I realized that how many people I can help with what I do, now that sort of changed for me, okay? Because I realized one of the big reasons why I personally was always very, very shy and, you know, would prefer to rather sort of sit behind a bush and like just, you know, behind a plant or whatever and, you know, kind of suss out what's happening. I remember I used to wish that somehow I can exist behind a one-way sort of mirror so I can see everybody but nobody can see me. But, um... That also had a lot to do with the fact that I didn't feel that I was worthy and that I was valuable, okay? Um, and like many people, I grew up and there were, um, you know, there were many sort of um, personal struggles and battles and things to face and, you know, um, uh, there wasn't always money. I had a complete lack of confidence. So in many senses, I realized to my own surprise, in fact, that a lot of the shyness that I had and, you know, didn't want to like sort of speak out too loud and be too present is because um, I didn't really want people to see sort of my fragile parts. If like if people looked at me too long, you know, I'll be brittle and I'll start falling apart. Um, and now I realize that, yes, naturally, I am still a bit of an introvert, so I'm sort of, I suppose, what you call like a like an extroverted introvert, you know. So I'll go out there and I'll have fun and all those type of things, but I also like my personal space. And, you know, I'm still getting overwhelmed by too many crowds and things like that. But um, at least now I know who I am, you know, and I've got a good relationship with who I am. And it's an ongoing work in progress because life keeps on expanding i keep on going into this experience of life where i'm growing more and more and more so i change more and more and more and the world changes more and more and everybody else changes more and more and um but i got to the point of where i am and i continue on the path of where i am because i understand that there are thoughts and beliefs about life and about myself that were not serving me in the best possible way. And sometimes, you know, for example, when I decided that I'd really like to become more successful, it it, it was like something was like, you know, gripping my chest for a little bit. I'm like, oh my goodness, if I'm successful, you know, I'm going to have money and what will people think? And, you know, all those sort of thoughts around success started to come up, you know, and... Um, and, and interestingly enough, a childhood pattern that I that I discovered that I had during a session that I had for myself one day um, was, you know, applying some of the tools that I teach others in manifestation. So um, I was I was running short on money, and I kept on running short on money. And I said to myself, okay, I get how this works. If I'm running short on money, there must be something within myself that is keeping this pattern going. So what is it? And I started to do the, you know, the exploration in the mind. And I realized that an idea or a belief that I had is that people who have money are not very nice people. And because I wanted to be a nice person um, and like the idea of being a nice person, um, my mind was blocking me from having money because I believed, one of my core beliefs were that people who have money are not nice people. You know, that they step on others. And I didn't understand that just because you have money doesn't mean that you must share it. It's yours. Just because you have a bag of apples, it's nice that you share it with someone. But then again, you don't have to. It's your apples. You know, you can keep it in your house, in your pantry, on your fridge and, you know, eat them or make juice or make pies or, you know, whatever. Feed them to the monkeys. <laughs> okay? um, but there is something that I had to realize. I didn't know that in all my life, in all my work, in all that I did. I didn't get that until I got it, boom, at that moment. Okay, And that is something that came from my beliefs as a child. And so when I, when I, when I started to you know, work at releasing that belief, then the money started to go because now a block of it was no longer there. And so when it came to you know, I was deciding that um, you know, maybe it's time for me to be more successful, I'm telling you, I was really stressed. I was very, very stressed, and it's because I didn't feel that I was good enough. I didn't feel that I was worthy. I didn't feel that I was deserving. I didn't. 
And so I realized these are patterns within my mind that is that's holding me back, you know. And um, I said, okay, then I have to work on letting that go. And I have to, <laughs> you know. Um, and so really that is what inner child healing is all about. Okay, and I find that when there's a lot of limiting beliefs about life within yourself, especially from childhood, especially about being worthy, deserving, you know, your value, your worth, that sort of stuff, loving yourself, appreciating yourself, caring yourself, not feeling that you're knowing that you're good enough, but knowing that you're good enough, knowing at the deep core of yourself that you are born deserving by the simple fact of being born you're born deserving just because you're not getting it now and you didn't get it previously doesn't make you a failure because now you realize that if you didn't get it it also obviously stands to reason that you can get it now you may just know may not know how to get it all right and this is obviously where um you know where the practice of hypnosis comes in which is so amazing i mean hypnosis is it's it's older than six thousand years it dates back further than that you know it goes through all the wisdom and the ages and the sages um and it's about speaking directly to the subconscious mind and saying what's holding you back you know something that comes up a lot of times is for example we feel that our parents should have taught us differently they should have made different choices they should have they should have done this and they should have done that and they should have done this and they should not have done that but the simple thing is that i think as we grow older and sometimes as we either you know start shouldering some kind of responsibility in our life or understanding or get our own kids or in my case at this particular point in time you know your nieces and your nephews um then you get to understand that um the the grown-ups back in the day you know and if you're looking at this and maybe you, you know you're not you're not that old yet man um we don't always know what to do adults are winging it all the time <laughs> they are you know um and it's not so much that life becomes easier, but you become better at it, you know, especially when you conscientiously work with yourself. When you run into a stumbling block, you no longer say, oh my goodness, you know, I'm such a horrible loser. You're like, okay, maybe something I don't get quite yet. Maybe something I can work on, something within myself, what patterns coming up. It's about, it's about paying attention to life, okay? It's about building a relationship with yourself. And, um... When we get to realize that our parents only did the best that they knew how or whatever, you know, um, authority figures or grown-up figures only did how they, how they knew how, you know. It's like, um, interestingly enough, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday who contacted me and that person got into a conflict with somebody else and it was quite an upsetting situation. And I was explaining to this person that a... Uh, so probably about two and a half, three years ago, I had a situation where I was working in a job that I really didn't like, a corporate sort of job. And um, then I was sitting in this, like like my, I was working for these two, um, for these two gentlemen, and um, the one of them was calling me in without the other one knowing, and it was inside this boardroom, but it's like a glass walls boardroom, and everybody walks past this glass boardroom. And um, this guy was really telling me what a loser I am, what a horrible person I am, you know, um, how heartless I am, how spiteful I am. And I mean, he was giving it to me, you know, with the profanities and all those type of things. And within that moment, I found so much peace and so much calm and so much compassion for this person that I could actually find myself sending love to this person because I understood that the same as with almost most things in life when somebody else you know um, spit those sometimes sort of almost like unfair unreasonable sort of things towards us 99.9% .9 of the time, that has got something to do with them and not really with us. You know, we more like a soundboard or, or a way for them to release how they may feel. But you get to that point where you have that good relationship with yourself, where somebody says something, you realize, but this is not me. You are more than welcome to have your opinion about me, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to accept this as opinion about myself. 
But when you're in a situation where you maybe still believe that you're not worthy, you still believe that you don't have value, those sort of things, then somebody says those type of things and you're horribly thrown by them because um, you move into a space where you're more concerned with what somebody else thinks about you as opposed to what you know, think and believe and value about yourself. So the inner child relationship, it's, got no, it's, it's not about being arrogant. It's not about... Um, um, it, it's, it's, you know, sometimes I feel people misunderstand it. They feel that it's, it's almost like you're slightly above others now. You know, um, so for example, sometimes when, you know, when we just awaken spiritually or we, we change the a belief system that we have, you know, um, be it religious, be it traditional, be it spiritual, be it whatever, you know, um, moving to another country, suddenly you feel that you are this epitome of wisdom and, you know, nobody else knows what you know, but... And that's beautiful, but if that's a decision for you, you know. And, and But what's even more beautiful is when you get further down that part where we realize just because it's a perfect solution for you doesn't mean that it has to be a perfect solution for somebody else as well because those people are not you. Their path is not yours, all right? And it's it's about letting go of those things that are just sort of not serving you well in this world and the beautiful thing is when you let go of the things that are not serving you well everybody around you benefits it's not just you everything and everyone benefits you start spending more time with your animals you start growing plants <laughs> you know your relationships just heal your life just gets better and Yes, the, the things will still come up. And I feel that sometimes when, you know, when difficult things come up, especially in sessions, then, um, or maybe people are a bit hesitant, then, for example, they want to jump up and they want to go to the toilet, you know, and they say to me, I can't have an hypnosis session because I've got a bad bladder. And I say to them, but, you know, you, and I always say this to people, you can still go to the bathroom because you're not asleep when you're in hypnosis. You're in a deep state of relaxation. So we can, you know, have a point of focus. So you're more than capable of getting up, going to the bathroom, washing your hands and coming back. And then we continue and you beautifully remain in trance. Um, but it is about giving yourself a chance. And I want to encourage you that even if you never decide to have a session with me, if you never decide to have a session with somebody else, um, I want to encourage you to open your mind to finding a way on a continual basis to enhance really built and enhance the experience that you have with yourself, the, 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 the relationship that you have with yourself, the relationship that you have with life, the relationship that you have with the source that we are all, you know, one of, that, 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 that you move into the space where you get to understand more of who you are. Because the more you understand who you are, the more you understand your own strengths, um, the more you understand the things that are not your strengths, the more options you have in life. Okay, If you take me on a personal level, for example, um, I can... I don't really very much like um, mathematics, for example. Now, if I really, I'm fascinated by patterns, but I don't really like maths too much, you know. Um, and if I, which sometimes happen in our school systems, you know, in our education systems and structures that, so if I'm not able to be good at a certain thing, then I am thought of as stupid by a system and a world and you know, it comes from my idea that everybody has to follow a same sort of path in order to be happy, in order to be successful, in order to be valued, in order to be worthy of love. But when you understand that you are an individual, that you are one of more than 7 billion people, and that you are not only unique, that you um, also have the right to be unique, that you have the right to be special in your own way, that you have the right to do the inner search to find out who you are, 
how you can contribute. What is holding you back? What is pushing you forward? What are you doing well? What are the areas of concerns? What are the things that are for you? And what are the things that are not for you? You know, sometimes we overthink these things. But when I say things that are not for you, let's use a simple example. Say, for example, for whatever reason, you are allergic to cabbage. If you really have to eat cabbage, you know, there's medication that you can take and maybe you can meditate out of it and you can, you know, do a hypnosis session to see why it is that your body is having this sort of reaction. Because believe it or not, sometimes, you know, be it smoking, be it addictions, be it, you know, phobias, um, you know, um, allergies, you can actually have that hypnotized right out of you. <laughs> because sometimes it's an emotional connection, okay? Not always, but sometimes. Um... And of course, I'm not a medical practitioner. So, you know, of course, you want to always consult your medical practitioner about things as well. But when you can get this sort of more spiritual alternative way to work together with the medical field, a lot of times people are saying, you know, um, or I've, I, I'm, I'm more proactive now, I tell people in advance, but, you know, they like to say, I'm on the spiritual path now, I realize who I am, and I can heal myself from my thoughts, and so I'm going to leave all this medication. And I'm saying, okay, no, that's fine. I understand that you say that you build who you are from your thoughts and your beliefs, but if your mind is not yet ready to, to leave that pattern behind, then you can have some, you know, um, consequences that you wouldn't want to have. But when you can work the two together, then it's beautiful, all right? But what I'm really getting is that it's not only about, you know, knowing your value and your worth and your capability and your talents and what you're good at, but it's also knowing that you are worth that, that you are worth living the life that is going to serve you in the best possible way. And for me, that is what the inner child journey is about. It's about working on those areas that are um, withholding you from living the best possible life. Okay. Namaste. Lemon light.